Okay, so in this video, we are going to be solving the optimal task assignment problem. And in order to do that, we're going to make use of a greedy algorithm strategy. So what we'll be doing is we'll be defining what this optimal task assignment problem is. We'll be outlining how we can solve this problem using a greedy approach, and then we'll code up that solution in Python. So let's go ahead and define what this optimal task assignment problem is. So we're given an array, and each cell of the array contains a number, and that number corresponds to the duration of a task. So for instance, we can think about the numbers, let's say, corresponding to hours. You can think about them corresponding to anything, seconds, minutes, or whatever, but just for consistency, we'll assume that these correspond to hours. So task at this cell corresponds to taking six hours. This one is three hours, two hours, so on. So we want to assign the tasks that we have here to some workers. And we want to determine the optimal way in which to assign these tasks to the workers, assuming that each worker must take two tasks. And we also assume that the tasks are independent and each task does take a fixed amount of time, which is given by the number in this array here. And the problem that we want to solve is we want to assign the tasks to the workers such that the time it takes to complete all of the tasks is minimized. So that is the problem. So we want something that kind of looks like this, where we assign each worker a pair of tasks that take a certain amount of time. So we want to assign the tasks to the workers such that the time it takes to complete all of the tasks together is minimized. So let's look at a solution for this particular problem with this array here. So the solution that is optimal in this case is the case where worker one gets tasks that take duration six and three, worker two gets the tasks that take two and seven, and worker three gets the tasks that take five and five. So if we calculate the following equation here, the total amount of time it takes worker one to complete its tasks is six plus nine, six plus three, which is nine, because that's the total amount of time it takes to complete both of these tasks. Likewise, for worker two, two plus seven is also nine, so we have to wait nine hours for worker two to complete both of its tasks. And then for worker three, it takes 10 hours, since five plus five is 10. And so the maximum amount of time that we'll have to wait for all of the workers to finish their tasks, in this case, is 10. And this turns out to be the smallest number that we could get here. So let's think about how to solve this problem in a more general way. If we're given an array of arbitrary length with some durations, how can we solve this problem arbitrarily? So one possible way that we can solve it is by enumerating all the possible pairs that we could make from this array. So we'll go through the array and make every single pair that we could possibly make. And then we'll feed it into this function here. So we'll do a similar thing for every pair that we generate and we'll find what is the smallest value that we can get for every single pairing here. So that's one way and that will work, it's brute force. And it's worth pointing out that if we enumerate all the possible pairs for a given list, let's say our array is of size n, then generating, we, we need to generate n factorial over two to the n, n over two pairs. So n is the number of tasks in a given array. So that's a bit much, it doesn't scale too well. So we need to think of another approach. And the other approach, as you can probably tell from the title of this video, is we're going to use a greedy approach. And the one that happens to work in this case is the following, where we'll pair the longest task with the shortest one. And we just keep doing this until we run out of tasks in the array that we're given. So let's again, take a look at the example that we were given at the beginning. And let's see how we can actually achieve this. So this is the array that we were given. So in order for us to pick the longest and shortest and to continually do that, we're going to sort the tasks in increasing order, just because that's going to make it a little bit easier for us to do this. So we've gone ahead and sorted the tasks in increasing order. And then what we want to do is we want to pick the longest duration and the shortest duration. And that's going to be our first pair. So we pick seven and two. That's our first pair. Those are the first two tasks that we'll assign to a worker. And then we do the same approach as we go through the array. So now we pick the next biggest one, and the next smallest one. That will give us three and six. Again, because we've sorted it, we're just kind of moving inwards. So the next pair of tasks that take six and three hours will be assigned to one of the other workers. And then finally, continually moving inward, we have the last two tasks, which take five and five. 
and that will give us 10. So we saw the same numbers that we had before, 9, 9, and 10, which give us a maximum amount of time that we'll have to wait for this case of 10 hours. So this is quite a bit better from a complexity standpoint as time complexity for solving using this approach is n log n, and that's primarily due to sorting since uh, comparison-based sorting is going to be at best n log n. So now that we know how to solve the problem, let's go to a terminal and we'll code up a solution in Python using this approach. So I've already coded up this array A, which is exactly what we saw from our example before. So it just has the same numbers in there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to follow the greedy approach and we're going to check if we get the same uh, pairs that we got in the example on the slide. So the first step that we want to do is we want to sort the array. So we're going to say A is equal to sorted of A. So as you know, all that does, if we print out A here, let me just clear the terminal. If we print out A to the screen, we should just see the sorted array. So let's see. Let me write that again and try this. Try writing the right file. There we go. So the sorted array is 235567. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of that print statement. So now what we want to do is we want to loop through the length of the array divided by 2 because we're essentially attacking the array on both ends. So we're going to go through and we're going to access the index from the front and the index from the back and we're going to kind of pincer through the array. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a for loop. So for i in range length of a divided by 2, we're going to print the optimal pairing. So what we want to do in this case, is we want to print the pairs such that the uh, the amount of time that it takes to complete all of the tasks is minimized. We can also print out the hour as well, but I guess for this, for this example, we're just going to print out the pairs. So in order to print out the pairs, all we need to do is say print a of i and then a not of i. So this not is the bitwise complement operator, and it really just calculates minus x minus 1. So for instance, if I go over to a Python terminal, if I was to say not 0, this is going to give minus 1. Not 1 will give minus 2, and then not 2 will give minus 3, and so on. So if I'm going to access the elements in the array, so I'm starting from the front, starting from the zeroth index, and I also want to attack the back index as well. So you'll notice that in Python, if you want to access the last element in the array, you do that using negative indices. So I'd, when I start off in the array, it starts off at zero, just to confirm. It's for i in range, there's an implicit zero here, to the length of a over two. So I'm going to be looping through zero, one, two, all the way up until the length of a divided by two. So 0 is going to start from the front, and then not 0 will start from the back, so that's minus 1. And then as we increment i, so i will from the front will be 1, and then not i will be minus 2. So it will move from the back, and then the i here will just move from the front. So if we do this, if we print out a of i and a of not i in this way, we will get the pairs, we should get the same pairs that we got here, 2 and 7, 3 and 6, five and five. Let's just go ahead, write that and confirm that that's what we get. So we get two and seven, three and six, five and five. So the code is quite concise, but that's all we really need to solve this particular problem. Most of the hard work was done when we went through an example over the slides and figured out how this problem actually behaves. So that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. The code for this, although it is concise, will also be on my GitHub page so you can download it as well. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.